Hi everyone, and welcome to Math 8, BCPS TV style. I'm Mr. Parker, and I'll be your host as we work through today's lesson, which is all about how people use data to make predictions. So why scatter plots? Well, have you ever wondered how weather people know when it's going to snow? Or how a sports team decides which players to trade or draft? Or how long it'll take a taxi to come pick you up? Today, we'll explore making decisions and predictions based on data. Today's lesson will cover the objectives, which are the same as week two of the Math 8 BCPS Remote Learning Packet, which is the week of April 14th. Students will interpret the meaning of individual points on a scatter plot and investigate patterns in scatter plots to determine if there is a positive or negative and linear or nonlinear association in the data. The first objective we're going to cover today is to interpret the meaning of individual points on a scatter plot. Here's a Desmos activity called Robot, what does a point in a scatter plot mean? The first slide asks us to drag the point and change the robot and asks us the question, what do you notice? So I'm going to drag this point around the graph and you should look simultaneously at the graph and the robot and see how the robot is changing as I move the point on the graph. It can be helpful to look at two separate ideas. One is what happens when I try to keep the point at the same height and move left to right? And how does the robot change if I try and keep the same horizontal distance and just move the point up and down? On this next screen, it asks us to describe something you know about the robot based on the graph. So here is the point 225. If I draw a vertical line straight down to the x-axis, I can see that the eye distance should be two inches because the first point, or the first number in an ordered pair always corresponds to the x-axis, in this case, the eye distance. I can also see that the robot's height should be 25 inches because the y-coordinate of 25 corresponds to how tall the robot is. On this screen, I have to move the point to represent each robot. So if I look at the heights of these different robots, I can see that the orange robot is pretty tall and the green robot is also pretty tall. The purple and the blue robots are smaller. So if I put the points so that the orange and the green have a taller height than the purple and the blue, I can use the try button and check it out. Oh, that's a sad robot. Ooh, a happy robot. Another happy robot. And one more sad robot. Well, what happened here? When we were looking at the points, I was only looking at their heights. I did not look at their eye distances. So while the purple and blue robot happened to be correct, the orange robot and the green robot were incorrect. The orange robot has eyes that are wider apart than the green robot. But according to the scatter plot that I created, the orange eye distance is very small and the green eye distance is larger. So I am going to switch my points here and I'm going to try it again see if I can get four happy robots. Ooh, there's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. All right, four happy robots. On this screen, we're asked to show a new robot. We have five robot robots, teal, yellow, silver, brown, and pink. The teal, yellow, silver, and brown are already plotted on this scatter plot and I need to drag the pink point to represent the pink robot. So looking down here in the table, the pink robot has an eye distance of eight and a height of 20. Well, the silver robot also has an eye distance of eight. So I know that when it comes to eye distance, my pink robot needs to be the same eye distance as my silver robot. So it needs to be somewhere along this vertical line. I also know that the pink robot has a height of 20 and the brown robot also has a height of 20. So it needs to be the same height as the brown robot on this horizontal line 
and the same eye distance as the silver robot on this vertical line. So I am going to try it out. Another happy robot. That sounds pretty good to me. Data. For this set of data, I asked 18 students how long they read yesterday and how many pages they read. How can we tell that I asked 18 students? Just count the number of points. Each point represents the answers for one student. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 students. Pretty cool. We can also tell some other things about this data. For instance, I can tell you that no one read for five minutes. Here is five minutes and there are no points along that line. I can also tell you no one read for 70 minutes or 70 pages rather, because there's nobody, no points at 70. I can tell you as well that the person that read the most number of pages was that student right there because their point is the highest along the pages read axis. And the student that read for the fewest minutes, that would be represented by this point right here because on the time axis, they are the one that showed that read for the fewest number of minutes. Let's try another example. Here, we're asked, what's the point? The graph shows the height and eye distances for eight blue robots, which I can see because there are eight blue points. Move the red point to make this statement true. The red robot is taller than all the blue robots and its eye distance is five inches. So here is our red robot, and I know that I need to make it taller than all the blue robots. If I look over here at the height, I can see that the tallest robot, that is, uh, the tallest blue robot that is, would be the dot that has the highest height, which appears to be this point right here. The Y coordinate is 42, which represents the height of the tallest blue robot. So I know I need to move my red point to more than 42 inches in height. So I'm gonna slide it up here to 45. Now, the second requirement was that its eye distance is five inches. So if I slide this red point over to where an eye distance of five inches, but maintain its height of 45 inches, I land right about there. When I submit this to the class, my classmates have already put some other points that they believe hit the requirements. Do you think those points hit the requirements as well? I do too. Now it's your turn. Here's a giant panda lives in a zoo. What does the point on the graph tell you about the panda? This is a problem from illustrative mathematics. If we look at the horizontal and vertical axes, we can tell some things about the panda. 3682 means that the panda is 36 months in age. The 82 means that the panda weighs 82 kilograms. Let's try one more example. Here is a scatter plot showing the heights of some robots. We have to circle the point representing the robot with the greatest eye distance, and then fill in the table with the values representing the robot with the greatest eye distance. So looking down at the bottom at the x-axis, here's where it says eye distance. If I want the greatest eye distance, I need to be the furthest to the right. And it looks like this point right here is the point that is furthest to the right, which means that this is the robot that has the greatest eye distance. Looking down at the x-axis, I can see that eye distance appears to be 13 inches. And looking across at the y-axis, it looks like that robot has a height of 40 inches. Now let's move on to our second objective, which is to investigate patterns in scatter plots to determine if there is a positive, negative, zero, and also a linear or nonlinear association. So let's think about it. Here are some data I recorded when I plugged my phone into a charger. I recorded the number of minutes since I plugged my phone in and what percent charge my phone had. When do you think I would be at 100% charge? Let's see what my family had to say. 
Kale said there are two dots, then you skip a line, and I skipped the line at the end, and then there was that, then that was my number. Her answer was 80 minutes. I also love that she drew a little sketch of the graph and showed that at 80 minutes, she thought we would have 100% charge. Pretty awesome. Here's what my wife thought about. She used a pen to hold up against the screen to make a line as close as to the points as possible and then approximated where the line crossed 100%. She thought it would take 81 minutes to fully charge the phone, pretty close to Kayla's guess of 80. How close was it to your prediction? Going back to the data that we looked at earlier, which showed us how many pages were read based on how long students had read, we can see that, and this is something that will be really important for next week's lesson, there is a general pattern in the data. The more time spent reading generally means that the more pages that were read. This data has a positive linear association. Positive because as one quantity increases, the other quantity also increases. Linear because the data appears to be close to forming a line. Here are some examples of ways that data can be related. We will look at the data in two ways. First, we will decide if the data has a positive, negative, or zero association. To do this, we will look to see if the quantities increase together, like in the picture on the left, which we will call positive association. In the middle picture, x value increases, the y values are all over the place, so we say that there is zero correlation. Lastly, in the picture on the right, as the x value increases, the y values decrease, so we say there is a negative correlation. That is, as one quantity goes up, the other quantity goes down. Secondly, we will decide if the association is linear, meaning it can be modeled with a line, or alternatively, that the rate of change is almost constant. The association on the left is a linear association because we can draw a line that represents the general trend of the data. The association on the right is a nonlinear association because a line would not be the best way to show the trend of the data. In other words, the rate of change does not appear to be nearly constant. Let's look at another example. Here's a set of data about how long people waited in line at the supermarket compared with the number of registers that were opened. There is a negative linear association because most of the points would be very close to this line. There is one data point that does not seem to fit this trend right here at four registers and one minute. When we have a point that does not fit the data, we tend to call that an outlier. Now it's your turn. Try it out. How would you describe this association? The words that we've been using so far today have been positive, zero, or negative association, and also describing it as linear or nonlinear. If you said that this is a positive, nonlinear association, you are well on your way to this week's objective. Let's try one more. How would you describe this association? If you said zero association, you are absolutely correct. Now, we didn't have to decide linear or nonlinear because when there is zero association, it's not gonna be either. So now it's time to try out some of that new vocabulary. This is a which one doesn't belong. If you've done this routine in class, you know that any of these answers would be correct as long as you can justify your answer why. So take a look at these scatter plots, pick one that you think doesn't belong with the others, and then explain why. Which one did you choose? Maybe you chose the one in the bottom left, because this one is the only one that has zero correlation. Or maybe you picked the one in the top right. This is the only one that has a negative correlation. Ooh, that is some sloppy handwriting. <laughs> well, did you pick one of the other ones? How come? Can you justify your answer? Thanks for joining us today. Here are some pictures of some awesome math things that I found in my life over the last couple of weeks. Enjoy.